Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about constructing your building gen structure by utilizing units, which are customizable modules that consist of a collection of different elements grouped together that can be assembled together to form your building. Creating and saving custom units make building assembly much quicker and easier. Let's deconstruct the composition of a unit first by looking at the scene manager. You can see here we have a single level that currently only consists of a single unit of floor. When you select the unit from the scene manager, the building gen panel will display some basic unit settings that allow you to set up wall, floor, and pillar elements at different locations. Mousing over each one will display a dummy in the viewport, showing where that element will be placed. You can see that there are both square and triangular elements for walls and floors. Once you place a floor element, you can continue with the walls and pillars. Each unit can contain a maximum of four walls and four pillars. You can select the individual elements or the entire unit from the scene manager. The building gen panel is context sensitive depending on which element or unit you have selected. In the viewport, you can double left click or middle click to select an individual element or else select it under the unit settings section. Here I'm deleting the closest wall element and I can use the drop down to replace it with a solid wall, a door or a window element. If I place a door here, you can see in the content manager that the door element consists of different components, or child elements. These can also be individually modified once they are selected. A quick way to duplicate an entire unit is to have it selected and hold the control key while moving it. This will make an identical copy with the same collection of elements. You can then remove extraneous elements between the two units and replace them with others like this window to create a larger level with more floor space. Expand your units as much as you want to increase the area of your level. From there, you can duplicate the entire level to create a second level. Clicking on the second floor window will display the various available elements from the sampler pack. Here I'm going to search for trim and apply that element. In this case, we don't want to retain the child elements as we no longer have a window. I'll then copy and paste it to the side. I can then proceed to delete the unwanted walls, multi-select the four pillars, and then double-click on the shorter pillar suitable for trim construction to replace them. I now have a collection of two subunits with a nice trim along the edges of the roof. From there, I can use the same multi-select for the two roof sections and double-click on the proper roof in the content manager to replace them. You have a choice between single and double-sided roof elements in this case. Trim layers are flexible and can be used in a number of different design layouts. For example, I can copy and paste to add an additional trim layer above my current one then use the arrow buttons in the level list to bring it down to the ground. I can then adjust the position and scale of my front steps to conform to the newly adjusted doorway height. Once you're satisfied with the structure layout, you can then move on to switching out the style of a specific level. To do this, make sure your level is selected, then hit rebuild from the level list and select the desired style. Here, I'm replacing the second level with the green plaster style. Be aware that this may also change, remove, or add specific child elements. In this case, it's changing the window materials, as well as adding a potted plant on the windowsill. Since the front step is a child element of the second level, we will also need to readjust the scale and transform after the rebuild. That's it for this tutorial on assembling units. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.